the Java string data type is slightly different to some of the primitive data types we talked about in the data types video. It's actually an object and it's an object that contains an array of characters. So in this code here I've created an array of characters with the letters that spell the words this is a string and then I'm constructing a string object with the character array and then printing that to the screen. This is a string. So, but there is actually a sort of compiler shortcut in Java where we can just write out the characters in double quotes. So instead of creating the character array and then constructing the string, we can just use double quotes. This is a string. And the thing between double quotes is being converted by the compiler into a string object. And here what we're doing is constructing a string object with another string object, which is one of the constructors of string. So there, this is a string. Now it's a good thing that the string is not just a simple data type, but it's an object because it gives us some more methods we can use. But there is something we have to be careful of. And that is if I were to construct another string here, my string to just take it directly from there and I'll print it out again print this second string out and then I'll do system out print line my string equals my string to and now you might expect my string to be equal to my string 2 but let's have a look at what happens when we run it this is a string this is a string and false they're not equal to each other that's because this type of equals works on primitive data types and it also works on objects to see if it's the same object but we've actually got two string objects here so it's not equal so this I find this to be um, well, it's a, it's quite an easy mistake to make in your code. If you want to compare two strings, you should use the equals method of one of the string objects and pass it the other string object. And then we can see these two strings are equal. And for the rest of this video, we're going to look at some of the methods in string that we can use, which makes it a good thing that string is an object and not just a um, primitive data type. So I'll go back to just having one string and we'll just have a look at some of the methods of string that we can use. So we have a length method, um, my string dot length, and if we print that to the console that will tell us how many characters we have in our string and a few other methods I'll demonstrate them all at the same time we have two uppercase to lowercase and we have um, we have index of and substring, these, these are very... So let's uh, try this, if we run now, we have this is a string, my string dot length gave us 16, so there should be 16 characters in there. The uppercase method returned a new string, this is a string in capital letters, and the lowercase gave us this is a string in lowercase letters. These methods are actually returning a new string because strings are actually constants. Once they're constructed, they don't change. Now we'll have a look at some other useful methods. We can have the substring method. 
system output line. My string dot substring five, say. And what that does is it will return a substring from five characters along. So if the first character is indexed at zero, so if we just go right one, two, three, four, five, it's given us is a string. And we can also define um, our end index if we say five comma seven. It should just give us the word is. Another thing we could do is index of. So if I say um, system out print my string index of string, this should tell us the the index of when the word string appears in our original string. So we have 10. So if we go from the start, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and there is string. Now, what we could combine these two, um, so for example, we could say um, string new string equals my string substring my string index of is. That's a very long-winded way of uh, just saying index of five, but we're searching for the word is, and we are um, going to assign the substring from the word is, the remainder of the string, to new string. So if we now system out print new string, that should give us is a string, is is a string, uh, that surprised me, so let's, did I do something to it there I wonder, this is a string, is is a string, um, Right, that confused me a bit then. Um, so the is, the word is, appears in the word this. So I, I, it has actually worked, but the index it gave us was uh, two along. So we've got is is a string. Um, so that's that's quite funny. Uh, but we can, I think the index of method can take from index. So if we if we were to say, from index three, then it would only start to search for the uh, the string that we're looking for after moving along three characters. So that gives us is a string. Now I'm not going to go through all of the methods in string, but I'm just going through some of the most useful ones. Um, then we'll have a look later at what other methods we can use. Now another method that I find very useful, especially if we're dealing with something like a CSV, a comma separated file, is um, split. So if I were to comma separate these words, this is a string, comma separated. And you could imagine that that's something we could read in from a CSV, comma separated file. And what I can then do is string array my words equals my string dot split. Now this is a regular expression, but comma is will work here. And then for each word, string word in my words, system output. Uh, 
got a few type thing over this there. And now we've taken the this is a string, comma separated string, and we've split out the words. So now we have the words are this is a string. So that's a useful method. Now um, I'll go back to just a basic string. Now there's some characters that we can't use in string. So for example, if I want to, um, this is a string. If we want, want to put the word string in quotation marks, I try and put a quotation mark there and there. I've got a problem. It's a compiler error because the first quotation mark has ended the string definition there and these two quotation marks are a second string. So what we can use for this is escape characters and this is uh, a backslash. So if we want to put a quote, we put a backslash in before the quote. So now our string should be this is a string in quotes. Right, now if I want to put backslash character, um, I've got a problem again because it thinks we're trying to type and one of these escape characters. So the escape character for backslash is backslash backslash. So there we put a backslash in the string. And another one which is very useful is backslash n. And that is a new line character. So now we've got this backslash is new line a quote string quote. So those are escape characters which are useful and you'll find a full list of those in the uh, Java documentation. Now speaking of Java documentation, if I have a look at string um, If we highlight a word like that and bring up this, this dialog, we can click on this icon here to take us to the Java doc. So because string is an object, this is the description of the string object. It tells you everything you need to know about this object. And then there's a list of methods. So here are the constructors. So here are the various different ways we can build a string object. And then we've got the methods. So in here, we should see our um, uppercase, lowercase, our equals method is in there, and all the methods that I've described in this video. And if you look through this, you can see exactly what we can do with string. And the beauty of Java and everything being an object, apart from primitive things, is that you can look in the Java doc and when you're writing your own classes, you can write your own Java doc in the methods, in the, in the comments, in the methods and the fields. And you can, when you've got an object, you can have a look at the Java doc for it to see what you can do. So that's, uh, that's a good way of finding out what you can do with um, the objects that you have. Now it's worth noting here that um, the other primitive data types, things like int and double and byte and all these things, there are wrapper classes for those. Now other primitive data types have wrapper classes which will give methods to the primitive data types as well. So if I had an int, for example, in i equals 10, if I wanted to have a bunch of methods that I could use on the int, what I can do is integer my integer equals integer value of i. And now I've got a my integer object and I'll have similar methods for things that I can do with the my integer similar to what I did with string. And if I have a look in here, 
I can have a look at the Java doc to that for that to see what we can do with that. Now there's one more thing I'd like to cover about string and that is that every class in Java extends a class called object. This is the basic, um, the, 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 the most basic class in the system. Now the object class has a method called toString. Now I've got my class here strings. If I um, construct a strings object, strings my object equals new strings. If I want to output what this strings object is, um, it's just an empty class. However, it does extend the um, object. Now we'll have a look in a later video about what extends mean, but it actually means that strings is a type of object. Um, so the methods that are in object get inherited by the all classes, uh, but we'll have a look at this more in the in a, the inheritance video later on. But if we try and system out print my object, let's have a look at what we get. We get the type of class and then a code telling us the instance of the class. But maybe maybe that's not what we want so for example when we system out printed a string we got the value of the character array in that string object and the way that happens is that every object can have a method called to string and that is public string to string really capital S and that can return any string that you want so I'm going to return the string, this is my object. And now if we system out print my object, which is of the class strings, we get this is my object. Now that can be useful for many reasons. One of the reasons is if we're debugging the code, if I put a breakpoint there and run in debug mode, then the execution of the program will stop at this point and if we take a look at my object we can see this is my object so we can see what it is just by looking at it because of the two string method so that's a very useful method and you'll probably use that a lot so that's it for now so the thing to remember from this video is that a string is an object it's not a primitive data type like the other data types we looked at but that's a good thing because that gives us a whole set of methods that we can do on a string another thing to learn is about the Java doc and about how we can take a look at the classes that we have and then we can take a look at a summary of all the methods and the fields in in the objects and when we're writing our code if we want it to be reusable in the future we should really write Java doc like this so that we can refer to it in the future. So that's it for now. Um, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. And if you'd like to see more videos like this and you haven't already, then please subscribe. Thanks for watching.